Welcome back to The Breakfast. And now we move into a conversation on Nigeria's unemployment rate. Uh, as at the end of 2020, it rose to 33.3% from 27.1% recorded as uh, the second quarter of the year 2020. This indicates that 23.2 million Nigerians are un unemployed. This figure is slightly more than the population of the Republic of Benin, Togo and Gabon all combined. Uh, of course, uh, data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that in the same period, the underemployment rate in Nigeria dropped from 28.6% recorded in the second quarter of 2020 to 22.8% in the fourth quarter. The increase in unemployment rate figures has been attributed to the after effect of the COVID-19 lockdowns. Could there be other reasons? Uh, we have this morning uh, financial analyst and planner Shegun Shele, who's uh, joining us to help uh, answer these questions. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Let's start with, you know, answering the first question there. You know that the unemployment uh, rate as it stands uh, can be blamed on COVID-19 and the effects of, uh, of um, you know, that is had with our economy, um, and not just in Nigeria, across the world. Do you agree with that narrative? Of course, um, largely the effect of the pandemic cannot be overemphasized. It's been a tough one, not only for Nigeria, but the entire economy of the world, um, economy, the entire countries of the world, actually are going through some bit of pain by reason of the consequences of what the COVID-19 pandemic did bring. But Nigeria's case um, is, is a little different. In as much as the pandemic uh, had its own tool, the economy in itself has been struggling. It's been struggling for a while. It only just started um, looking uh, up a bit late uh, 2019 and everyone was hopeful that by 2020, everything was going to really cascade into something far much better. But of course, the, 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 the pandemic hit us. The entire country was locked down. And then we are here now. But minus COVID, the economy of Nigeria has suffered largely, largely from inadequate infrastructure. That much we own. The economy, every economy depends on the adequate provision of infrastructure, be it road network, uh, power, especially power for the manufacturing sector. Here, it's been a struggle for a country with, uh, that got independence as far back as 1960, still not being able to effectively generate and distribute adequate power that will be required for the manufacturing sector all uh, sectors as, as a matter of fact to be able to do well now the government of the day is trying all that it can to ensure that we have all this infrastructure in place you can see the massive rail uh, uh, network construction the road rehabilitations you know but that that is just one of the problems we also have a, largely a workforce a workforce that is not adequately skilled adequately trained to be able to handle um, the, the, the dictates of an investor, an entrepreneur who seeks to establish his firm, either a foreign investor or even a local investor. You have a workforce that is more of how much can I get? How much is available now that I can get and put in my pocket? If they cannot earn as much from you, even if where they do, they are still looking for how they will cut corners. You are practically every organization, whether the financial services or even the core manufacturing concerns, even up to the non-profit organizations, especially even the religious organizations. Everybody have a tale to tell of how the staff they have have, in one way or the other, I mean, dealt with them, dealt a big blow on them by pilfering what uh, the companies are struggling to put together. Now, we also have the, I mean, of late, the Nigerian story. That even started long before the COVID era. We have the level of insecurity. It's now at an alarming rate. Before it was Boko Haram that everybody was really more concerned about. But it's, it's gone beyond that. We are now having 
all sorts, kidnapping everywhere. There was the farmer headers uh, issue. We are now having the bandits, the court criminal bandits, if that's what you call them. We are making life quite unbearable for the Nigerian investor, the Nigerian entrepreneur. Let's talk of now a foreign investor, a foreign entrepreneur who may want to come and invest in Nigeria. Okay. How would anybody start a job? How would anybody set up a business when you know that your life is at risk in the area of administration? That, that makes it almost impossible. Okay. And Mr. yet, we're talking about unemployment. Without, how are they going to be, without companies rather running, established, being set up, how would there be employment? Okay, so Mr. Scheller, basically, you, you've, broken, you've broken out down the reasons why you feel we're having unemployment rates in Nigeria. According to you, there's the factor of the COVID-19 pandemic and how lots of companies have shut down. You also mentioned the unskilled part of our labor force, about 23.2 million people, uh, of our la uh, that's a third of our labor uh, force population unemployed, and you're saying most of them are unskilled. You also mentioned insecurity and how that might be scaring investors. But really, where do we stand in this situation and what does this rate mean for us, this unemployment rate in the country? It's obvious that um, the economy would bleed by reason of the huge ratio of the unemployment rate. So if you are not doing well economically, then you can know the reasons why. Where is the workforce to get the job done? Where is the business in itself? So we are, we, every, organize, every company, every, rather, every, organize, every country, sorry, actually is measured, the economic fortunes are measured based on the level of their GDP, their gross domestic product. So how much of activity have we generated to the extent where we can be upscaling our GDP? Now, if the companies, both manufacturing concerns, service industry, and even the agricultural industry are not doing that which you're expected to do, then naturally the economy would be the one that will suffer for it. The people who either too were farmers on the farm trying to ensure that they only not produce goods or crops rather for the use for their own immediate family, for the sustenance of the family, but are looking at the possibility of even making sales out of their produce and largely exporting the produce, are now being scared away from the, from the, from the farms. So it has a stole, and agriculture seems of late to be contributing a larger percentage of Nigeria's GDP. Now, if there is a dwindling fortune in that area, how do you expect the economy to, 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 to upscale? Okay, Mr. Shelley, I wanted Little to draw your attention to, uh, sorry to butt in, but I wanted to draw your attention to the section of Nigeria's population who are highly skilled, well-educated, but still cannot find jobs. Would you blame this on the government? And because they came in promising to provide jobs, you know, infrastructure development. So would you, how would you rate the government in that aspect of its, you know, fulfilling its campaign promises, you know, to match up the population? Because we're one of the fastest growing uh, population in the world. And by 2050, our population is projected to double. So do you think the government in itself is doing enough to provide jobs to match up to our growing population? But you know, that in itself is a misnomer. It is not the job of government to provide jobs. The job of government is to create and, and allow for an enabling environment for in private individuals like you and I to provide jobs. That is when you can be talking about proper efficiency and effectiveness of the system. How many people can government employ? What is the business of government setting up businesses that they themselves will now create agencies and say they want to try and control? That in itself is, is an aberration. So the best thing for the government to do ordinarily would have to create an empty environment. Now, for the particular group of people who we might say, yes, are skilled, skilled by reason of their education, that's what we call it, the education from the university. Now, these are within the age bracket of 24 to 35. They actually have a larger percentage or form a larger percentage of the people who are regarded as quite to be unemployed or underemployed as are today. This group of people, between you and I, they have just been taught theoretical processes of whatever uh, 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 discipline that they've gone to the university to study. Most of them do not have, they do not have any practical knowledge. Oh. 
they cannot invent anything they are not they are not creative in their thinking all that they do is just to read write an exam pass the exam and then they are let out of the university and by the time you sit with them i've, I've, I've had an opportunity to sit with a large number of people at interview panels you know and then when you ask questions to try and get a sense of practical knowledge out of them then you find that it, it, okay. it's, it's not there mr, mr. shelley now, um mr the shelley system, would, little, would we would we not then know, sorry, tie this, this Mr. Shelley, would you not then tie this to government failure at the end of the day? Because if we're saying that we have people who went to school but lack the technical knowledge, does this not then relate to failure in terms of education? We have asked to, you know, striking here and there saying the government is not providing enough facilities for them to study. And going back to the issue of uh, government creating jobs, I remember when the president was campaigning uh, for 2015, one of his promises was to create 3 million jobs yearly, and he said it was going to create a total of 15 million jobs. So where are the jobs right now where lots of people are home and the MBS has just told us that our unemployment statistics is getting worse? Now, you just, you just said it right. I mean, it's a, it's a campaign promise. It's not like uh, we can just try as much to hold them to their words, but they don't have what it takes to be able to deliver on these promises. Because in the first place, these promises, for some of us who heard it then, we knew, I mean, that, that's a tall one. How do you get 3 million people employed doing what the best they did with this uh, ministry of uh, labor recent uh, uh, local government 774,000 uh, recruitment uh, for for people to to be trained to be to be trained in specific skills for them to now be let out to try and set up their own businesses and later employ could be one of those effects would actually have one of those effects and that's what we're talking about a situation where government in itself can probably create an environment where you can help to skill the people who would start businesses and effectively now employ individuals who, by extension, reduces the unemployment rate. Now, when we talk about the rates, when we talk about the consequence of what the rate in itself has, has, has come to give, we have, a board, we have a group of students, minus what ASU itself has done. We are talking about a curriculum. We are talking about a system of education that is not helping this kind of processes to function well. That's what we are talking about. A system of education that has not come to the level at which we can have the students, when they come out, think more of setting up businesses as rather thinking of how they would go and get a job. Now, thinking of getting a job, how much of these job-related skills do they have? You know, even the schools, the universities, let's be specific now, the universities have not trained, and I doubt if they do, train the students on even how to package themselves for a job, for a job uh, interview. They don't do that. So there is, a, there is a disconnect. The students come out thinking that by the time they get to a panel, all they will ask them is the theoretical knowledge that they have. But right. you and I know that there is a departure from the theory you know and the actual job that is required of you to do. Right, so Michelle, when there is let me such an issue, it now has a blame. Government is expected to help review the educational system, adjust the curriculum, make it a more creative-oriented, practical curriculum, which All will right, engender uh, growth by right, extension of on, uh, Mr. through economic fortunes and then and, and, and staff uh, to be employed. All right, Shagun Shele, you know, these, um, you know, factors, you know, you know you've, you've uh, expressed, you know, yourself on numerous uh, plethora of uh, factors that have led us to where we are today. Um, um, I, I asked initially about the, the effect of COVID-19, and from what you're saying, uh, the COVID-19 isn't necessarily just to blame. You know, there's a lot of other factors that have come in uh, that, you know, have kept us where we are today. The current administration also has, has mentioned over time they are plans to lift 100 million uh, Nigerians out of poverty. Um, they've also, of course, um, you know, re-energized the NPAR scheme, you know, to put uh, more Nigerians um, uh, to earn something or, or the other. Um, but if you also look at the United States, Donald Trump was praised for reducing the unemployment rate in the U.S. to um, record-breaking figures, you know, in the time that he was uh, president. Um, and it didn't take him you know, decades to do that. What do you think that the current administration really should be doing and not just saying 
but doing if we are serious about reducing the level of unemployment in Nigeria? Um, what are the immediate steps that you feel, you feel you know, must be taken from today to ensure that we at least get more Nigerians out of poverty? Because the effects of this level of unemployment, you know, it's pretty obvious across uh, the country. Beautiful. Now, for government, the first thing is to continue with what they've started with the deployment of infrastructure. We talk about the United States and we're talking of Nigeria. That is a country that is far advanced when it comes to infrastructure deployment. We are having a massive infrastructure deficit, which makes us tag way behind to the United States. Now, to be able to make a change, just like as much as they have commenced in trying to the empower and so many other social schemes, there are numerous social schemes, so many interventions that government itself has even started. Even during the COVID, we saw the, uh, the, the, the level at which the CBN was even directly involved in ensuring that people don't get to close their businesses so that they will not lay off staff and allow the economy in itself to be able to bounce back. We are out of recession by reason of those little activities. It helped. But the holistic thing that will help reverse these rates, these rates are quite alarming. It's the highest in the history of this country. So for us to be able to do that, government should not just continue to pay lip service. Government should be more determined. We don't have the resources the United States have. Otherwise, we would have been able to, yes, within a short space, just like you have seen what uh, the current president, Joe Biden, is even trying to do. He has just signed a package, a one point what? Eight trillion dollars to be uh, to, to be able to revitalize the economy of the United States. Do we have such funds? Do we can we easily lay hold of one point, even a trillion naira in Nigeria? We have wow. issues that are beyond just uh, monetary. We have the systemic problem. We have a structural problem. There are so many issues. But what government can do is to first and foremost, if anything at all, try and reduce the level the level of poverty. Trying to right. get 100 million people out of poverty is, is rhetoric. Okay, it's Mr. Just a Mr. Thank Mr. You. What, I, Mr. What Shelle, steps are you going to do? Mr. Shelle, what indeed, we, we, need, we need answers, and we do hope the government gives us one soon enough to reverse this ugly unemployment rate. And we also have inflation rate here at over 17% in the country. Well, thank you very much for coming on the breakfast this morning. Thank All you right. so much for having me. Have a great day. Absolutely. Um, once again, you know, not just leap service, but actually action. Um, you know, no matter how many times we have um, meetings and we address the press and we speak about lifting 100 million, 100 million Nigerians out of poverty, none of these things will actually happen if we don't start, you know, moving, you know, or making those moves immediately. The environment that, you know, Shegun Shele spoke about, the, 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 the economic environment that we live in, um, electricity, security, um, and of course, uh, how you know the ease of doing business, you know, really in Nigeria, really is realistically not the ones on paper, not the ones that you see um, in articles. It's you know what exactly is the business environment for Nigerians, um, MSMEs, and the ability and the, you know the space that they have to grow so that they can employ more people and put food on a lot of other tables. Um, All right. So really, always, we, we, we will definitely to, come back to, to, this, uh, to this conversation, really. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, turn now to discuss religion and state after the break.